Well, that is definitely not the garbage collection we are going to talk about today. In this video, we'll take a look at the garbage collection in Java and how it works internally. So, without any further delay, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sivain Naik and in this video, we will talk about garbage collection in Java. This is going to be a fairly long topic, so I have divided the video into two parts. In this part, we will take a look at what garbage collection is exactly and how Java uses the generational garbage collection technique to divide the heap memory into multiple parts before performing garbage collection. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified of all my future videos. For now, let's start. So what exactly is garbage collection? Simply put, it's the process of reclaiming the runtime unused memory by destroying the unused objects. Now, if you have used languages like C and C++, you know that programmers are responsible for both creation and destruction of objects there. Sometimes, the programmer may forget to destroy the useless objects. The memory allocated to them is never released. The used memory of the system keeps on growing and eventually, there is no more memory left in the system to allocate. Such applications are known to suffer from something you call memory leaks. Now, after a certain point of time, sufficient memory is not available for the creation of new objects and the entire program just terminates. This is due to out of memory exceptions. In C and C++, you can use keywords like free and delete to perform garbage collection. However, in Java, garbage collection happens automatically during the entire lifetime of the program. Over the lifetime of a Java application, objects are created and released. In my last video about JVM, you saw how these objects are allocated to the heap memory. Eventually, after some time, some of these objects are not needed anymore. So, you can say that at any point of time, the heap memory consists of two different types of objects. The first are live objects. These objects are being used currently and they are being referenced from somewhere else. The second is dead objects. These objects are not used from anywhere and they have no references anywhere. And the garbage collector finds these unused or dead objects and deletes them from the heap memory to make space for new objects. The main objective of garbage collection is to free heap memory by destroying the objects that don't contain a reference. When there are no references to an object, it is assumed to be dead and no longer required. So the memory occupied by such an object can now be reclaimed. There are various ways in which references to an object can be released to make it a candidate for garbage collection. Some of them are by making a reference as null, by assigning a reference to another reference, and by using anonymous objects. Let's move on to some code to see how this actually works. To demonstrate how to write code that dereferences objects in Java, I created a standard student class here with some standard variables like name and age. Let's go ahead and write some code to understand how we can dereference objects in the three ways that we have seen earlier. The first way was to set an object reference as null. So let me create a new student here. Let me just give it any name and an age. Now I have created a new student object here which is referenced by the variable called John. Now when I go and mark John as null, now the reference pointer John is pointing to the null object. So the object that I created earlier, the student object here is not referenced by anyone else now. This student object here now is a candidate for garbage collection. The second way was to assign the reference of one object to another. For this, let me create two different objects. Create a student called Rambo and just another one called Mambo. Now we have two student objects which are pointed to by two different variables called Rambo and Mambo. Let me go ahead and assign the reference of one student variable to another. So when I do Rambo equal to Mambo, I have changed the references here. Now the variable Rambo is pointing to the variable Mambo and both of them are pointing to this student object here. Now the other student object here does not have a reference anymore. 
the reference it had earlier the rambo reference has now been changed so this student object is now free for garbage collection the third way was to define anonymous objects so if i just write a new student here now i have created this object here but there are no references to this object so this object is not used by anything else this object here is also candidate for garbage collection we saw that garbage collection is an automatic process and the programmer does not need to explicitly mark the objects that need to be deleted now the garbage collection implementation lives inside the jvm but there are multiple jvms available in the market and each of those jvms can implement their own version of the garbage collector but the jvm specifications say that any implementation of the garbage collector should meet the standards set by the jvm specifications now these standards call out three explicit steps that any garbage collector should meet that is marking the objects that need to be deleted actually deleting them and then compacting the heap memory after the deletion is complete to understand how a garbage collector finds out unused object references and marks them for deletion we need to go through the concept of garbage collector rules garbage collectors work on the concept of garbage collection rules or gc rules to identify the live and dead objects examples of such garbage collection rules are local variables in parameters of the currently executing methods live threads classes loaded by the system class loader and their static fields global jni references and objects used for synchronization monitors or held by the jvm for its own purposes the garbage collector traverses the whole object graph in memory starting from those garbage collection roots and follows the references from the roots to other objects when gc visits an object it marks it as live all the objects which are not reachable from the gc roots are garbage and considered as dead the first phase in garbage collection is the mark phase in this phase the gc identifies all the live objects in memory so it starts with the gc roots and traverses the entire object graph whenever the gc visits an object it marks it as accessible or alive all the objects which are not reachable from any of the garbage collection roots are considered as dead objects or garbage these dead objects are considered as candidates for garbage collection once the marking is done the next phase is the sweep phase after the marking phase we have memory spaces which are occupied by live objects and dead objects in the sweep phase we release the memory fragments which contain these dead objects after the sweeping or the deletion of dead objects is done we may also need to do some compacting why is this required this is required because the dead objects that were removed during the sweep phase may not necessarily be next to each other so here if you see there are some gaps in the memory area after the sweep phase this can lead to fragmented memory space a memory can be compacted after the garbage collector deletes the dead objects so that the remaining objects are in a contiguous block at the start of the heap so all the remaining live objects are moved to the beginning of the heap so that the memory is not fragmented anymore This is also known as defragmentation. Now, the compaction process makes it easier to allocate memory to new objects sequentially. Now, Java garbage collectors implement a generational garbage collection strategy that categorizes objects by their age. Having to mark and compact all the objects in a JVM is inefficient. As more and more objects are allocated in the JVM, the list of objects grows and it leads to a longer garbage collection time. Empirical analysis of applications has shown that most of the objects in Java are short-lived. This is why Java categorizes objects into generations and performs garbage collection accordingly. The heap memory in the JVM is divided into three sections: the young generation, the old generation, and a permanent generation. The first part of the heap memory is known as the young generation. All the newly created objects start in the young generation. It is further subdivided into two parts. one the eden space all the new objects created start in the eden space the initial memory for those objects is allocated from the eden space next there are two survivor spaces you may call them s1 or s2 or you can also call them from space and to space whenever a garbage collection event happens the surviving objects from the eden space are moved to one of these survivor spaces now when a garbage collection event happens in the young generation that event is known as a minor garbage collection event 
when the eden space gets filled with objects a minor garbage collection event happens and all the dead objects are deleted all the live objects in the eden space are moved to one of the survivor spaces a minor garbage collection event also checks the objects in the survivor space and moves them to the other survivor space so let's take the following sequence as an example okay when we start creating new objects all of them are present in the eden space after some time the eden contains both live and dead objects when a minor garbage collection happens all the dead objects are removed from the eden now all the live objects are moved to s1 we go on creating new objects and the eden space again gets filled up it has some live objects and some dead objects by this time s1 also has some live objects and some dead objects now when a minor garbage collection event happens again all the dead objects from eden and s1 are removed all the live objects present in eden s1 are moved to s2 eden and s1 are now empty similarly whenever the next time a garbage collection event happens everything from eden and s2 are moved to s1 so at any point of time either of the survivor spaces is always empty the next part of the heap is known as the old generation objects that are long lived are eventually moved from the young generation to the old generation this space is also known as the tenured generation and contains objects that have remained in the survivor spaces for a very long time usually there is a threshold defined for these objects which decides how many garbage collection cycles an object can survive before it is moved from the survivor space to the old generation remember when the objects were garbage collected from the young generation it was called a minor garbage collection event similarly when the garbage collected from the old generation it is called a major garbage collection event permanent generation or perm gen is a special heap space separated from the main heap area that contain the young and old generations the jvm keeps track of loaded class metadata in the perm gen it also stores all the static content in this space such as all the static methods primitive variables and references to the static objects when classes are unloaded or no longer used they can be garbage collected from the perm gen space now there is an upper limit to the size of the perm gen space with its limited memory perm gen was involved in generating the infamous out of memory error due to this it was completely removed in jdk 8 and replaced with the meta space the most significant enhancement in meta space is how it handles memory allocation unlike perm gen meta space can automatically resize the heap space and grow as needed this helps in avoiding the problem of applications going out of memory due to the perm gen space errors the garbage collector can also now automatically trigger the cleaning of the dead classes once the class metadata usage reaches its maximum meta space size thank you for watching the video if you liked it please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any feedback for me write them down in the comment section you can also reach out to me on linkedin and twitter see you in the next video